And in the final installment of the Back to School series 2020, it's all about writing. Anyway, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I really hope you're having a good day. If you are, I'm very happy for you. Today's video, as I said at the beginning, it's the final part to the Back to School series, which is never an actual series, it's, but you know, whatever. This video is all about writing and writing tips as to how to write a really good essay, especially if you're crunched on time. So essay writing tips, let's go. And obviously I don't know everything, but these tips are really what helps me write essays, so here you go. I've broken this video up into three parts. The first part is ideas, the second part is like speed, I guess, and then the third part is stylization. Also, I'm filming this video against my new wall, so I'm just gonna see how that goes in terms of lighting too, but that's not interesting to you. Anyway, let's get started. So the first tip under ideas, this may seem really, really obvious, but honestly it's important to keep in mind, and that is when you're planning out your essay, make sure you're actually like answering the question that the prompt is asking. Yeah, you just want to make sure you're doing that before you write the whole essay and then you go back and you realize, oh wait, I didn't actually answer the question that the prompt was asking. So when you're planning, just make sure you're answering the question. The next like planning tip or whatever is write down your main argument and your thesis statement first and make sure you like choose a side. And make it clear what you're arguing. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be like, well, I'm gonna argue A, but also like B is right, but also like A is right, but also B is right, but also A is right, but also B is right. Don't be like that. Make sure which side or whatever that you're arguing is very clear. And in most essays, you do have to refer to the text. So when you do have to refer to the text, I assume you're gonna be needing to use direct quotes. So I'd say once you have like your whole main argument done, find the quotes and the pieces in the text that you're gonna use and work the smaller argument around those quotes instead of doing it the other way because then it'll make the references to the text very seamless and integrated into your whole paper. And then when you're planning out your essay to add length to it, if you really are gonna need to add length, and I just suggest doing this tip in general, even if you don't need to add length, is to do the opposing sides argument in one paragraph, and then in the next paragraph, refute the opposing sides argument and explain why your argument is right, because that will enhance your argument and also will lengthen the paper. And then when you're planning out your paper, another thing that you can do is comparing whatever you're writing about to something that's happened currently or something that's happened in the past or some other piece of literature that you've read or like something that was mentioned in class. Just compare it to something else and that'll take it to the next level. And then this one is really important, I think, and that is to ask the teacher if you need to assume that the audience of your paper has read the book or has background knowledge or if you should assume that the audience hasn't read the book or doesn't have the background knowledge. Because because if the hypothetical audience has not read the book or does not have the background knowledge, you will have to do a lot more contextual explaining in the actual paper itself, which will make the paper longer, but you should probably just ask the teacher that before you write pages and pages of background knowledge. So once you have the basic ideas planned out for your essay, which can really take anywhere from like five minutes to like hours and hours, it just kind of depends on how much time you have and how much planning needs to go into your paper, then you can focus on writing the actual paper and this is how you can write the actual paper quickly, so the speed section of this video. So number one is start writing at the spot where you think you have the most evidence. So maybe one of the body paragraphs. Obviously you don't have to write the paper in order, but if you start where you have the most evidence, you can really get momentum and that'll push you forward into writing the rest of the paper. Then write down everything. Just write the whole paper. Don't stop. Just write the whole thing. It doesn't have to be in order as I've already said. And instead of trying to make it sound all pretty the first time you write it, just write everything down and put parentheses around the words you want to change later when you come back and do the style stylization tips, which I will mention in a little bit. Another thing you can do, I know for sure that you can do this on Google Docs and Chrome, is do text dictation. So I'll link in the description box how you turn that on and how you do that. But that basically allows you to speak into Google Docs and then like Siri or whatever will translate it into words on the paper. And I have talked about this before, but that makes your paper writing process go a lot faster because then you can just ramble off all of your ideas and then Siri will dictate them for you. And the final tip is don't spend too much time writing the conclusion literally the conclusion is not that important. Just like rewrite the intro paragraph and to a couple of sentences and there you go. And the final section of this video is stylization tips. 
So consider using these techniques to make your paper better once it's gone through the first draft. So basically all of these tips will make your paper sound better even if your arguments are not as strong or also using these tips will add to already good arguments. So number one, if you only have time to stylize one part, make it like the first page or the intro paragraph because generally people will pay the most attention to that part. Next, try at all costs to avoid using passive voice unless you absolutely have to when the subject of the sentence is unclear and if you don't know what passive voice is, basically here's my example. The song Invisible String by Taylor Swift, she uses passive voice all the time and obviously that's not like formal writing so she can do whatever she wants because of that and also because she's Taylor Swift so she can do whatever she wants. But in that song, especially during the verses, she says stuff like bad was the blood of the song in the cab on your first trip to LA. So that sounds a little bit weird because that's in passive voice. Anyway, grammar lesson of the day complete. Next, do not use second person. Do not use the word you at all because that's just is super distracting. And it's kind of like an acting breaking the fourth wall when you use the word you. And obviously if it's not a narrative essay, do not use the word I either. And then you might be like, well, what do I use instead? Use the word one. So pretend your paper is about drawing pictures. Instead of saying you should draw a picture of a tree, say one should draw a picture of a tree. Next, this is an Another one about tenses. So either use the tense would or choose to use will. Oftentimes would and will can be interchanged, but make sure when you're going through your paper, you either have stuck to the tense of would and stuck to the tense of will. And sometimes they can overlap, but generally try to just keep it consistent. Next, words that you should not overuse. The word just, the word that, and the word very. Oftentimes it's so easy to use the word just before literally anything. I do that all the time, especially in emails, but just be cautious about that. Also the word that, make sure you use it when it needs to be used, but don't use it when it's not necessary. And also don't overuse adjectives and adverbs. Make sure they really add to the sentence if you're gonna use them and not subtract or be distracting to the sentence. Also another one, this one's kind of one of my pet peeves and it just kind of makes your writing sound a little bit more elementary schooly. If you start paragraphs like this, don't start your body paragraphs with firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, fifthly. Don't use those weaker transition words. Instead, use more, I don't know, professional transition words. Anyway, the flow of your paper as a whole is very important. Next, also make sure you're varying your sentence structure and your sentence length. So don't make all of your sentences sound like I ran to school. I walked to the park. I sat on the bench. Don't make it like that. Do simple sentences. Do complex sentences. Do... I literally forgot the other types of sentences, but just make sure you're varying your sentences. Also make sure you're properly introducing your quotes. Don't just like have a quote by itself as one sentence. Make sure the quotes like flow into the rest of the paper. And sometimes you just can't get the quotes to flow very well, so sometimes you may have to paraphrase the quotes, but still make sure you're citing what you're paraphrasing. Next, literally just use spell check. A bunch of people just don't use spell check. It takes like three seconds to use spell check, so just do that. <laughs> also, don't use exclamation points, especially in formal writing. I mean, I use exclamation points all the time in emails, but when you're writing like a research paper, avoid those exclamation points unless they're like within a quote. And finally, when you're proofreading it, you can also do this in Google Docs on Chrome is have Siri read your essay out loud. I'll also link in the description box how you can enable that feature. It's really helpful and yeah. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Those are all of my essay writing tips. Honestly, these tips have really, really helped me improve my writing, and I really hope that they help you. But thanks so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below anything you want to. Comment down below how many papers you're gonna have to write this semester if you know. And subscribe to my channel, turn the notification bell on, follow me on Instagram, and I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.